This video explores the activity life cycle in Android. The objectives are stated here with a timeline for when they appear in the video. So what we want to do now is become much more familiar with one of our fundamental building blocks in Android, which is an activity. For this video, it would be nice if you went out and read this App Fundamentals, which is really just a text-based implementation of those three videos you should have already watched. Androidology, 1, 2, and 3 that are hosted on this same Android developer website. And that you come in and read this section on activities. Don't need to worry about fragments and loaders yet. And uh, at least scan through this section on tasks and backstacks. So if you scroll down in this activities uh, section here, you'll see um, that you'll find a chart that talks about the life cycle of an activity. And we need to really start becoming familiar with this life cycle so we can start building some more interesting applications. And of course, so far we've only dealt with a single activity within our little applications. The activity that launches for us automatically that I'm generally calling main activity. So I've made a copy of that chart for me to draw on. And let's talk about what we've done so far is all we've done is created a simple activity, a single activity. I'm going to call that activity A, my main activity. What happens in the life cycle? Well, the first thing that happens, and this is the only method we've really looked at so far, is the onCreate method is called. And that's the place where we know that our user interface that's defined in that XML file was inflated for us. And side note, I'm not going to try to worry now about understanding exactly what we're going to do in all of these life cycle methods. Our first step in learning is going to be understanding when they're called and we'll gain an understanding about which ones we use under which circumstances as we go through this journey. So the first method that's called is always on create. The second method that's called is always on start. And the third method that's called is always on resume. And at that point, you have a running activity in the forefront that you can see. And so we interact with our activity for a little while, and then we hit our back button. In that case, then, the fourth thing that happens is on pause. The fifth thing that happens is on stop. And the sixth thing that happens is on destroy, and our activity shut down. So that's the simplest case of what happens in the life cycle of an activity is you enter the activity and from that activity you don't go forward to another activity. We haven't looked at that yet. But from that single activity you then navigate back away. Then you're going to call those six life cycle methods in that order. Let's go ahead and take a look at a code implementation of that running. So to get ready for this demo, I've created a project called Activity Lifecycle Demo, building against 2.3.3 API 10. And all I've done is specified I wanted my single activity I get for free to be called main activity. And I've gone into the layout file and I have modified the text to say main activity rather than the hello world application. Again, in many of my demos, I'm not going to externalize strings even though we always should because I think it makes it clearer if you can see my text right there rather than referencing to the values folder and not see it. But on a production application, we always want to externalize all our strings. So if we take a look at that in the graphical user mode, I just have a single activity that says main activity, and that's where we're at so far. Now the only other minor homework I've done before I came in is I've put in this here, public final string log underscore tag main activity and I named that after the name of my class because this is also going to be a video a little bit about logging because logging will help us to understand what's going on in our activity life cycle and as we now start building things that are a little bit larger it really helps to have logging going on so we can figure out what's really happening with my program especially when things go south. Okay, so that's all the work I've done so far. Now, we saw on this chart that the only method we've dealt with so far is onCreate. 
I didn't talk about on restart yet because it didn't come into play on the first very simple scenario that we discussed, but we'll see that in play soon. But we know we had on create, and so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven methods, which means I only have one of those seven methods in. If I want to have all of those methods in my activity, then I need to add six more methods. Now, not all activities are going to need to have all of these methods and interact with all of these points in the life cycle. But for this demo, I want to place them all in there. So what do we do? Well, there's a nice little feature in Eclipse that allows us to go to source, override implement methods. And all of those are methods of our parent class activity. And if we want to override them so we can interact with them in the life cycle directly, I can just come down and say, well, those all started with the word on. And there was a on create I already have. We know we need on destroy. We saw that one in use. We saw on pause. We saw on resume and on restart. On stop and on start. And I think, is that all of our methods? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we have all seven of those methods in there. Now, what don't I like <clears throat> is that they're not really listed in the order that I want them to be. I'm going to come in here to my outline view, and I can take things, and this is beautiful, and put them where I want them. I want that log tag back at the top. And what's the first method that's called in the activity lifecycle? Well, onCreate is. So let's go ahead and grab on create and say, well, that's the first method that's called. Let's have that at the top. What's the next method that's called? Well, on start is if it's the first time we're calling our activity. And soon we're going to learn that if we're coming back to an activity that's on the back stack and find out what all that means, on restart is called before start. So if on restart is sometimes called, and when it is, it's called before on start, so I want that to be listed second. Followed by, we just saw, on start. Followed by, on resume. Do we have those right so far? I think so. On create. On restart. On start on resume and then after we're all done with our application running we need to call on pause on stop and on destroy on pause on stop and I'll destroy now doesn't that feel good we have the life cycle methods listed in the order that they're going to be called and for this first demo I just scratched out we know that on restart won't be called because the activity is never being restarted so that one's going to be skipped and we just want to prove that yes, these six are called